So I had literally just finished recording what would have been this month's Big Rap Bites will now be next month's Big Rap Bites. Um, switch my phone on and there's the news about the, the fact that Shane Rimmer has now left us. Uh, where, where do we even start with this? I've had to do this several times on Big Rap Bites now talk about people who are sadly no longer with us. In most cases though, it's been someone who was a part of the Anderson universe, but it was a part, even though that was you know one small part of a much wider and much more extensive career. You know, we, 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 we will miss Xenia and Windsor, but you could not describe either of those as like a pillar of the Jerry Anderson community. Shane Rimmer absolutely was that. I think this is right up there with with losing Jerry, losing Sylvia, losing um, Ed Bishop and Mike Billington in in the same week as each other. Such a such a huge, huge loss. And and again, it's one of those lives and careers that has touched so many franchises. You've got the Doctor Who and Star Wars and Bond and countless others. But you know, Scott Tracy is is what he will always be remembered for. For anyone else, that would be more than enough. Just playing Scott Tracy would be more than enough of a legacy to leave to us Anderson Knights, whatever we want to call ourselves. But no, it's not just that, because he did other voices in Thunderbirds. He did voices in Captain Scarlet, Joe 90. He was in a few episodes of UFO. He was in Space 1999. He could be heard in a few Space 1999s. The two episodes of The Protectors, The Investigator, Space Police, Dick Spanner. I've got Dick Spanner. It's just this constant ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. And not only the, the acting, the voice work, the writing as well. There's like a dozen episodes across the Century 21 era and the investigator as well, I think, that are all credited to him. And some really good things in there, like you know, Avalanche and Hole in One, Zeke's Blues, which he wrote with the, the aim that Tony Curtis would guest star in to play Zeke, and when that fell through, he came in to do it. Yeah, it seems, it, it just seems so, so wrong to focus in on any one contribution that that man made. But you have to come back to Scott, Scott Tracy, and you know, the very best episodes of Thunderbirds build to this this perfect storm of just nail-biting tension. The building's about to fall down, the vehicle's about to crash, everything's gonna explode, the Barry Gray music is building like crazy, and then you've got Scott talking into the microphone. You've got to locate them within the next two minutes. And he just manages to wring so much tension and drama out of that voice and yet made it seem so easy. He just was that character in a way that I don't think too many other actors. I would say Ed Bishop as Straker is probably the closest where the, the actor seemed really invested in the role. And that's our childhood. That's my childhood and your childhoods and all our childhoods. That's, that's quite an impressive legacy. As I said, it, it just, just Scott alone, just Thunderbirds alone would be a massive legacy. The fact that he did all those other things as well. If you've not got a copy already, I thoroughly recommend picking up From Thunderbirds to Pterodactyls, his autobiography. I have a signed one. Many people watching this do frequent conventions and, um, if you have, chances are you will have bumped into Shane on the convention circuit at some point over the last, what, 30 years? Possibly longer? And as fun as they can be, it's almost an artificial kind of interaction. You are meeting these people, but essentially you are buying a product, you're buying a signed photo or a book or something. And understandably, there are people who, who aren't comfortable or who don't understand the the sustained interest that people have in the work that they did you know, decades ago. Shane was the complete opposite of that. Whenever I saw him, and I think I saw him at maybe half a dozen events over the last 10 years, he not only understood the continued appeal of these shows, 
he seemed to thrive on it. The thought that people who were kids when Thunderbirds was first on would come up to him to say hi, to say thank you for for Scott, for Thunderbirds, and to what that meant to them as kids. And they would have their own kids in tow. And he seemed just so enthused by that. Always so warm, so welcoming, so gracious. You can say that again. One of my um, fondest memories of the second Andacon, the one in Leicester, was on the Saturday night. As the Saturday main day event was, was shutting down, all the guests were leaving. I was about two, three feet away from the door as Shane walked out and I wasn't paying any attention to him particularly and then I heard Good night, Chris! And I looked over at him and he was going and I was like what? How? 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 How, how do you know me? I know we've we've met but you remember me? And I genuinely think that you know, chances are if you saw him two, three times, he probably remembered us. He probably remembered all of us. He understood the place that we held for him in our hearts, and uh, he not only understood, he, he absolutely reciprocated it. Because he loved these shows as well, and he was grateful to us for continuing to share that love, for keeping these, these things alive. I'm sure many of you have, have seen this photo at conventions, or maybe even have one. So, once again, a great man has left us, a great voice, a great writer, not just in the Anderson world, but across so many things, and just, I think my abiding memory of him, aside from this wonderful body of work, was just how, how nice he was at conventions, and how, how much he genuinely got the affection and admiration that we held the shows in and, and held him in. I really genuinely believe and hope that he knew just how much we all loved him and, and his work. So, once again, to close out another sad edition of Big Rat Bites, an especially sad edition, here are some highlights of Shane Rimmer as Scott Tracy and Dick Spanner and countless others in the Jerry Anderson universe. F.A.B. Shane. Hey, what's all this bedside manner stuff? Thunderbirds, I go! Changing to horizontal flight. What do you suppose that is out there? I'm Brogan, Lieutenant Brogan. You cut my lip! The sharp stab of pain made me realize it was a dumb move. International Rescue doesn't give up that easy. Look, there are 600 people up there with about 40 minutes to live. Now, you can't help them, but I believe we can. Now, what's it gonna be? I took the elevator up to the 14th floor. My office is on the 15th, but that's another story. You must not touch my brain. Okay, here we go. Are you going to let them go, sir? I'd say they're in no condition to handle a job. Show yourself, freak! Okay, if you think it's necessary. Yeah. How about it? Well, there's nothing more we can do, sir. We're stuck. Keep going, Wilson. They're not going to stop us now. Hey, sometimes us old timers be a bit handy, huh? I figured I'd give the goon beside me the old one three. To this day, I still don't know how the hell I did that. Hey, look, tell him not to forget you. He's delighted. Okay, let's get out of it. See you back at the base.